tonight on World Football News. Oh, hat-trick moment, hat-trick for Andy Carroll. We've got goals galore. And a brand new hero emerges on timeshine. Ben Ayew gets it on the act. Sexy football from the EPL. 6-0 last week, 6-0 this week. Towards Hangeland and a goal. Heroes and villains. The moment. Agony at Amy in the A-League. Oh, the whole crowd went up. And how is on the ball? While Perth are purring, the Bundesliga's back and stand by for a Socceroos exclusive. This is World Football News with your hosts, Chris Bailey and David Drillich and special guest, Zelko Kalach. Hello and welcome to World Football News. Here's today's top stories. Arsenal is closing in on soccer as goalkeeper Mark Schwarzer with reports boss Arsene Wenger is set to double his offer to Fulham for the Aussie stopper. Tottenham have completed the signing of former Chelsea and Gunners skipper William Gallas. The French international moves on a free transfer to Arsenal's bitter London rivals, signing a one-year deal. And Wellington Phoenix have finalised a deal for goalkeeper Danny Vukovic for the remainder of the season after he was dismissed by Turkish side Konya Spor. Those stories and plenty more to come tonight with my guests David and Jelko. But first, the news that's been hogging the headlines all week the feud between Harry Kuehl and former Socceroos teammate Robbie Slater. Slater alleged in a newspaper column that during the World Cup in South Africa, a senior Socceroos member confronted Harry at dinner and told him he wasn't good enough to play for his country anymore. A furious Kuehl then challenged Slater live on air. Uh, you want to try to cause trouble for me and disrespect my name in the Australian team. And I want to know why. What have I ever done to you? You're 100% you're, you're behind that. Because if you're 100% behind that, I will deal with this. Because I have spoken to all the players and none of them have turned around and said that. No player I've ever played with has ever told me to do that. Following that, Harry's manager, Bernie Mandich, revealed to Network 10 Sports Tonight programme he believed former Socceroos assistant Graham Arnold was the source of the claim. Well, let's put it this way. If you ask the players uh, the sort of stuff that came out during the World Cup, it only could have come out of team management because the players are not and have not been into uh, basically slagging each other off. And there's not a single player, and I like to identify all the players that were there at, at the table that Harry was at. Lucas Neal, Tim Cale, Craig Moore, Scott Chipperfield, None of those players, none of them, reckoned that this happened. Graham Arnold has denied the claims, while Scott Chipperfield, the man Bernie Mandich named as the player who made the comment, has remained silent. Now, joining us from Istanbul to, to put an end to these claims is the Socceroos World Cup captain, Lucas Neal. Uh, Lucas, thanks for your time. Uh, I expect you've had calls from uh, just about everyone regarding this. Can you please put the record straight? What exactly happened at that dinner? Uh, well, my position on it is that um, I've spoke to Harry and uh, I'm going to do the right thing and keep what we said between us um, you know he, know he knows my thoughts on it and, and that's pretty much all I really want to say on it um, I think the bigger picture we need to look at is that you know, it's been a bad week for football in Australia and um, a lot of hard work's gone in particularly from Frank Lowy and, and co and from players, myself, and players past and present uh, to try and enhance the reputation of football in Australia, to try and build the soccer brand. I think this has been a bad week that's tarnished that. Lucas, what's Harry's mood been like this week since the outburst? Fantastic. As the model professional that he is, um, he's yet again uh, backed up whatever he, he wants to say publicly by putting in great performances on the pitch. and. Um, it's pleasing for Australia and pleasing for me um, as, as the captain to him in Australia that he's in great form. He's looking like the, you know, the lightning fast winger that he, he, I once remember him at Liverpool and Leeds, um, dropping his shoulder, beating players. And that can only be good for not only him and Galatasaray, but for Australia as well. Lucas, let's uh, put that behind us now and move on. It, it's been a busy week for Galatasaray, three games including a Europa Cup match. However, it's not Champions League football, Lucas. Is that frustrating for you? It is. It's even more frustrating with the uh, 
with results we're picking up. We've uh, struggled in, in Europe to, to win games at home and we're having to do it the hard way away after conceding um, away goals, which is always difficult. And in the league we've started with two losses now in a row, which is um, very damaging for a club like us. And very frustrating because I'm an ambitious player and I came here um, trying to challenge for the title, trying to get into Champions League and at the moment that, uh, that, that plan is definitely not working. Lucas, do you feel the club, uh, I mean they've still got three of their ten foreign spots uh, vacant. Uh, is there news that they are going to start buying? There's a, there's a rumour every day here. It's, I think we've been linked to about 150 players uh, since the transfer window or since the season finished and the transfer window was open so you know it's not I'd imagine it's not through lack of trying but it's just picking the right ones and, and hopefully bringing in the ones that are going to make a difference and bring in players that perhaps can and do something a little bit different but that's not to take away the squad that we have we've signed some really good Turkish players and um, over time I think we will gel and be a great blend of, of, of foreign and Turkish but you know it needs to happen and it needs to happen soon. Lucas you say yourself and, and the other players around you want to play Champions League football, if that doesn't eventuate, is that when you would consider leaving Galatasaray? <laughs> well, I'm on my last year of my contract anyway, so um, I, I, you know, if this is my last year at Galatasaray, I want to make sure it's a big year. I want to be remembered for a player who's come in and made an impact. Um, I certainly love it here. I love Turkey. I love the people. I love Galatasaray. Uh, my family's really settled, which any player will tell you is always really important, and I'm really enjoying my time here. So the best way to maximise that enjoyment is, is to win, and to win trophies, and to, to say that you've been part of, of a really good time at the club, and, and that's certainly my goal. Um, and it's, like I said, it's up to everybody else to decide my future as long as I do my stuff on the pitch. Hopefully I give them an excuse to keep me longer. Mm.